Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt, and today I'm going to be breaking down what is an ETF and why ETFs are the best way to diversify your portfolio. All your life, you might have been told that mutual funds are the best way to diversify your portfolio, but they can cost you tens of thousands of dollars in the long run. Next week, I'll discuss why I avoid mutual funds, but for this video, I want to focus on why it's so important to diversify and why ETFs are the best way to do this, especially for young investors. This is the fourth chapter in my Millennial Investing Guide, so check out my past videos where I broke down the basics of investing and the difference between stocks and bonds. To understand ETFs, you'll need to understand the basics of the stock market, so click the pop-up at the top right to check out that video first. The main benefit of ETFs is to diversify your portfolio. That basically means don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't want to have all your money invested in one industry or even worse, in one single company. Let's say you love the energy sector because those companies pay great dividends. So you invest all your money in energy companies. And then one day, the price of oil plummets and now all of your energy companies take a huge hit. And so your entire portfolio has suffered. Or worse, what if you had invested your entire retirement fund in a single company? Say you chose a secure and established company like Sears or Nortel. Even giants like these can fall, and when they file for bankruptcy, you've just lost your entire retirement fund. So it is much safer to invest in multiple companies across different sectors. That way, even if one of the companies you're invested in takes a hit, you'll be protected because your other investments should be growing in value. Your stocks will go up and down in value every day, but it is extremely unlikely for all of your stocks to drop at the same time, especially if they're diversified across multiple industries. For example, if there's another housing market collapse, your investments in banks and real estate through REITs will probably take a hit. But your investments in telecommunications, grocery stores, and the technology sector will be doing fine and might even grow, and so your total portfolio will be unharmed. If you've seen my video on the top three best Canadian dividend stocks, you know that I am a huge fan of TD, Enbridge, and Rio Can, but even so, I would never put all of my money in just these three companies. I make sure to invest in multiple companies across different sectors, but how do you actually do this? How do you diversify, especially if you have a limited amount of money? You could do this by choosing one or two companies in each industry and buying stocks from them. So let's say I want to invest in TD and BMO to cover the financial sector, Loblaws for groceries, Fortis and Hydro One for utilities, RioCan for real estate, Microsoft and Amazon for tech, and Bell and Rogers for telecommunications. And now I want to buy stocks from these 10 strong companies. But here's the thing, every time you buy or sell a stock, you will pay a commission fee on that trade usually between five and $10, depending on your broker. Let's say I have $1,000 to invest. I want to diversify my portfolio, so I wanna buy stocks from these 10 different companies. I'm making 10 different trades, so my broker will charge me commission 10 times. That's $100 down the drain from my original $1,000. So right off the bat, I've already lost 10% of my investment through commission fees, all in an effort to diversify. Here's another issue. You can only buy a whole number of stocks. You can't buy a fraction of a share. The problem is, a lot of the best blue chip stocks out there are really expensive. So if you want to invest in Amazon, for example, you'll need to spend over $1,700 to buy a single share of Amazon. You can't buy half a share of Amazon. So if you only have $1,000, you won't be able to invest in Amazon. And so you'll be missing out on one of the biggest companies in the world. This is where ETFs come in. ETFs and mutual funds are a collection of stocks and bonds all packaged together into a single fund. ETF stands for exchange traded funds, and they're called that because ETFs are bought and sold on the stock exchange just like stocks. When you buy a stock, you're buying a unit of ownership of that company. But when you buy a share of an ETF, you're buying a little tiny piece of hundreds of different companies all in a single trade. Instead of buying individual stocks and paying commission dozens of times, you can invest in hundreds of companies in a single trade, and so you'll only pay commission once by buying an ETF. Even better, if you use Questrade, which is my favorite online broker, you won't pay any commission at all when you buy ETFs. Remember my previous example where I wanted to invest in 10 diversified companies? Buying individual stocks from these 10 companies would have cost me $100 in commission. But if I bought an ETF that contained these 10 companies and I bought this ETF through Questrade, I would have paid $0 in commission versus $100. Also, with ETFs, you can own fractions of a company as opposed to stocks. 
Remember, to buy a single stock of Amazon, it would cost you over $1,700. But you can buy an ETF like SPY for only $300. And this ETF contains the largest US companies, including Amazon. So for $300, you now own a small portion of Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, and 500 other huge companies. You may be wondering, what about dividends? With stocks, you own a small portion of the company, and so you are entitled to a small portion of their profits. This is no different when investing in ETFs. When you own an ETF, you are a small owner in each of the hundreds of companies inside the ETF, and so you are entitled to a portion of all of their profits. The only difference is that if you own multiple stocks, each stock has a different dividend payment date, and so you'll receive multiple smaller payments throughout the quarter. With an ETF, however, all of the individual dividends are collected and paid out all at once, so you'll receive one large dividend every quarter. So what's the catch? Well, the main downside to ETFs is that they are not free to own. When you buy a stock, you pay a commission fee of $5 to $10 upfront, but after that, you own that stock without any ongoing costs. And even if you hold onto the stock for 30 years, you'll still own it and it won't cost you a thing. But with an ETF and mutual funds, you have to pay someone to manage this fund. As long as you hold on to an ETF, you have to pay an ongoing fee called the Management Expense Ratio, or MER. This fee is a percentage of the total value of the ETF or mutual fund that you own. Luckily for ETFs, this percentage is extremely low compared to mutual funds. But an important thing to note is that this fee is not treated like income tax or capital gains tax. You don't pay a percentage of the profit you make you pay a percentage of the total value that you own. So for example, if you own $10,000 in an ETF, which has an MER or management expense ratio of 0.06%, every year you'll be charged a fee of 0.06% of this $10,000, so you'll be charged $6 every year. Even if your ETF remains flat and doesn't earn you any profit, you still need to pay this $6 fee every single year. So it's different from capital gains tax, which only charges you a percentage of your profit. You might be thinking, $6 out of a $10,000 investment sounds like nothing. And you're right, that's because ETFs charge very, very low fees. But if you go with a mutual fund instead, mutual funds charge 10 to 50 times higher fees than an ETF does. Most mutual funds have an MER of 2 to 3% compared to ETFs, which charge between 0.03% and 0.5%. This is a huge difference. So holding $10,000 in a passive ETF would cost you $6 a year, but holding $10,000 in a mutual fund would cost you $300 a year. This is how banks get rich and basically rob you through mutual funds. Even worse, most people don't even know that they're paying a fee for their mutual funds or ETFs. That's because the MER is built into the price or value of the fund. It's not like the monthly fee of your checking account or the annual fee of your credit card. This MER never shows up in your monthly statements or in your list of transactions. If it did, it would terrify most customers. Like stocks, the price of a mutual fund or an ETF goes up and down every single day. But the price that you see is the price after the MER has already been taken away. You'll never see the raw actual value of your mutual fund, because if you did, you'd see just how much money the banks have taken away from you through management fees over the years. In my upcoming video, I'll dive deeper into just how much money you lose throughout your life because of these management fees and why I avoid mutual funds. So how come ETFs have such a low management fee compared to mutual funds? That's because mutual funds are actively managed, and most ETFs are passively managed. I'll talk more about active management in my next video where I'll be hating on mutual funds. But basically, every mutual fund has a portfolio manager who is constantly adjusting the fund, buying and selling stocks for you in an effort to beat the market. This constant trading and adjusting is called active management. And the huge management fee that comes with mutual funds is the price you pay for the expertise of the portfolio manager. Incredibly, 85% of active managers perform worse than the market. So what are you paying this huge fee for? ETFs, on the other hand, are passively managed. ETFs are not trying to beat the market, they're trying to match the market. So with a passively managed ETF, there's no expert portfolio manager trying to outsmart everyone else on the market. ETFs are simply a collection of stocks used to replicate an index. So what do we mean by the market or the index? An index is a collection of the biggest companies in a given sector or a given region, which represents all of the stocks in that group. It's basically like how a sample can represent the full population. So when you hear on the news that the market dropped 10% last week, that means that the combined value of all of the stocks in the S&P 500 index 
dropped by 10%. The S&P 500 is one of the oldest and most important indices in the world, and it contains the 500 largest companies in the United States. The S&P 500 index represents the entire US stock market, and it contains some of the most valuable companies in the world. Companies like Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Walmart. On the Canadian side, we use the TSX Composite Index, which contains the 250 largest Canadian companies. This index represents the Canadian stock market through the Toronto Stock Exchange, and it contains companies like RBC, BMO, TD, Enbridge, Bell, and Rogers. These two indices are just a list of companies. You can't buy an index, but what you can do is buy an ETF which tracks the index. This ETF will contain the same companies and in the same proportions as the index, and that's really easy to do. You don't need to pay an expert portfolio manager to do that. You just need someone or even a computer program to look up the current index proportions and then match it. There's no decision making or expert insight involved. That's why it's called passive management, and that's why the management fee for ETFs is so low. For example, the S&P 500 index currently has Microsoft as the largest company with 4.4% of the market, and Apple as the second largest company with 4.3% of the market. So if I want to invest in the US stock market as a whole to diversify my portfolio, I'll invest in an ETF which tracks the S&P 500 index, such as SPY. SPY is an ETF which contains these 500 companies and in the right proportions. So if I look at SPY's holdings, I'll see that 4.4% of SPY's worth is in Microsoft and 4.3% is in Apple. And so this ETF is matching the market. And since this ETF is so easy to set up, manage, and update day to day, I only pay an MER of 0.09%. So there you have it. That's everything you need to know about ETFs, management fees, and how to diversify your portfolio. I'll be making a video soon where I list my favorite ETFs to invest in. And check out my upcoming video where I further prove why you should avoid mutual funds and choose ETFs instead. Also, I talked a bit about Questrade, which is my favorite online broker, since they don't charge any commission when you buy ETFs. If you want to get started with Questrade, click my referral link in the description box below and you'll get $50 in commission-free trades when you sign up. Plus, I'll get a small referral bonus. Thanks for watching guys and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really helps me build this channel and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos every Thursday. And let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite ETFs. Be sure to tune into my next video where I'll be breaking down exactly how to buy stocks and I'll be doing a live walkthrough of buying stocks using Quest Trade. Thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a t-shirt. Bye guys.